If I had to start all over again and relearn CSGO Surf, ramping is the first thing I would focus on. This is the biggest factor that separates a good surfer from a bad one. Now I'm going to get you through the basics, but I'm also going to tell you enough about ramping to beat the hardest maps with just a few hundred hours of practice. In fact, today we're going to talk about Surf 666, which will most likely be your first tier 6 ever. But before that, we have to talk about what a ramp is. I know it sounds silly, but you have to know this. Ramps are almost always triangles. They have width, height, and length. The length is called the bottom of the ramp, and on the opposite side is the top. And at the very top of the ramp is the spine. Sometimes spines have a flat edge, so the ramp has two spines. Ramps can also be curved or at an angle or upside down. There's a lot of ramps, and this is how we use them. When you board a ramp, you aim for the spine. This is the number one thing I see new players miss. Next, look down and to the right at the bottom of the ramp, aiming to barely dodge the spine. Then let yourself onto the ramp while pressing A. If you've done this correctly, you have not bumped into anything and are flush with the ramp. And once you are on, you slowly pull up, mainly to the left until you are looking straight forward. Obviously, this technique can change drastically if the ramp is quirky, and therein lies the game of surf. Can you figure out how to keep your speed through all this weird and impossible architecture? It would be great if I could tell you what you're doing wrong or if there was some plugin, but there's not. There's systems that the base CSGO game has to diagnose your gameplay, just like the sponsor of this video, Leadify. What Leadify does would be insane for surf. They give you breakdowns of your play based on each area of the map. They give you focus areas to improve on. I'm terrified so they recommended basic dust two flashes and it even told me how bad my recoil control was but leadify also has a holistic independent rating system to evaluate you and your teammates this rating isn't just kills but your whole impact on the team's chances of winning it takes into account the fact that you can trade early for your team and miss out on kills later leadify rewards those who play smart and help their team win and for pro users 2d replays of the entire game and a highlight system so you can capture and upload your best moments automatically. If you're interested, you can check it out with the link in the description. But back in Surf, we have to round out the basics. There's a main theme going on with each ramp. The closer to the spine that you board, and the more parallel and flush with the ramp you are, the more speed you will keep. So here's what's happening. As you fall, you gradually convert your falling speed to horizontal speed. And as a result, your path is a curve. Not like this, not like this. The curve is the key to almost every ramp that will help you keep the most speed. The reason why is because of air acceleration, a command from CSGO that's also a cap to how fast you can turn. Board too fast and it will kill your speed. That speed is what we call units, the number one factor to whether you will reach the next ramp. How you flick or how smooth you are or your strafing does not matter nearly as much as your raw units. In our original example, we're boarding on the right side and aiming for the spine. This can be kind of awkward, but possible if we started from the right. So a rule of thumb is that if you are boarding a ramp on the right side, go to the left first, then turn to the right and board the ramp. This will make boarding at the spine much more intuitive. The whole movement is kind of like a smooth zigzag, A-D-A. And here's where things get complicated. A few factors can impact how you want to handle a ramp. For example, how fast you are falling down onto it. Imagine we're spinning down this box to the ramp below. If I try to look straight ahead and do a very shallow board, I'll end up with virtually zero units. My curve isn't long enough and I hit the air accelerate cap. So instead, I'll look almost straight down and again towards the edge of the ramp and do as long as a curve as I can before falling off. I have a lot of falling speed, so my curve must be long and drastic. On the other hand, imagine I'm on Who Knows 2, one of the smoothest maps in the game. Here I have a ton of horizontal speed and not a lot of falling speed. As a consequence, my curves can be quite flat, converting the little bit of falling speed to forward speed. Once I start to fall and reach a ramp, I'll have to look farther to the right and downward and slowly pull up. But you might notice, for ramps right in front of me, I don't board at the spine. In these cases, now your goal is to board as close to the edge as possible. So let's look at the classic map, Surf Utopia. 
on the first ramp, I'm going to employ our first strategy, straightening to the left and then to the right, and boarding right at the spine angled downwards until I slowly pull up. But I won't go all the way down because of the second ramp, where I'm going to board at the edge. I'll strafe to the left to get closer to the ramp and then turn right until I'm barely missing the edge, then hold A to stick onto the ramp. And sometimes we don't have access to an edge or a spine. We have to do the same movement in the middle of the ramp. This is sometimes called a snap board or a ramp strafe, but it's something you're just gonna have to get used to. And it is definitely one of the most challenging boards if forced. There's two other ramp types we can cover. First is curved ramps. You might already know, instead of holding A on this curved ramp, you hold D. If you hold A and try to turn, you will fly up the ramp. This is because you need the D key to turn right but how you move your mouse while doing this is the key. Your goal is to maintain your mouse at the same height along the ramp, so you are literally pointing at a long strip around the ramp. The optimal curve would be maintaining the exact same height throughout, depending on what's after. And second is head surfs. Head surfs are almost the same as regular boards on the same side, but your up and down movements are mirrored. You move up and to the right and then pull down and to the left. If you suck at head surfs, just use a save lock right before one and practice it until you get it right. You will never forget how to do it. So what is the best way to board every possible ramp? The simple answer is boarding as close as possible to the spine or edge of the ramp without slamming into it in the same direction as your speed. This incredibly small distance between your model and the ramp can make a world record. The best surfers are barely missing each edge and therefore lose very few units to collision. And on the most unit dependent levels, like Fiello B4, boards must be close to perfect each time. Then you pull up at a constant rate to desired height or unit count. Now you might notice we didn't talk a lot about leaving ramps or what's also called a flicking. Long story short, if you have more units, you can just flick up less. I think this part of ramping is the easy part. Just learn how fast to move your mouse in each situation. Getting onto each ramp is the real challenge. This whole technique is a huge reason why surfers have low sensitivity. You want to get as microscopically close to the correct entry every time. If your sense is high, your physical in real life movements have to be very small. If your sense is low, the area on your mouse pad that is correct is bigger. Also, surf is a game of precision and not quick reactions, so we don't really get a big benefit for very fast sensitivity. If you're wondering what your sense should be, generally between 0.6 and 1 eDPI is preferred with some wiggle room on either end. Now we can talk about one of the most popular yet unappreciated maps in existence. The second most played map on KSF, Surf 666, because you can play this map at every skill level. Each stage goes up one tier in difficulty, starting at tier one. Stage two is tier two, stage three is tier three, etc. You might get to stage three or even stage four in your first playthrough, but wherever you get stuck, you should stop and save lock the stage. If you don't know what save lock is, I have a full tutorial for that in the upper right. Every ramp on this stage is a traditional ramp where we can use our technique. For example, on stage five, I would strafe to the right and then to the left and board right at the spine and then even out into the bend of the ramp. And what you should do is save lock before and after every single ramp. So on this ramp, I made a save lock. I'll do a very slight flick, avoiding the ceiling, and do our boarding technique on the next ramp. Practice every ramp on the stage and focus on maximizing your units, just this number, and then do the same for stage six. This might be really hard or impossible for you. If you need to, just go down a tier to the previous stage, but the amount you will learn from this deep practice is immense. You will feel like a better surfer immediately after trying this, I guarantee it. Please let me know if this helped you at all. I'll do my best to answer your questions in the comments. Also check me out on Twitch or join the Discord for even more surfing content. Thank you so much for watching and good luck sliding those triangles.